Hello everyone. Um, I'm Meghna and I'm an education consultant at Aussies Melbourne. I welcome everyone to this exciting session on fabrication, welding, wall and floor tiling courses in South Australia and future state pathways. We are joined by Mr. Navjot Singh, who works in Aussies Group Elizabeth Branch and has over four years of experience in the field, specializing in general skilled migration, employer sponsored visas, partner visa, parent visa, and global talent visas, along with I was saying um, that he has a wide range of experience in a variety of things, including general skilled migration, employer sponsored visas, um, partner visa, parent visa, global talent visas, along with handling skill assessment requirements for a broad spectrum of skilled occupations. We also have Ms. Neha Singh, who is from Aussies Group Veribi. She specializes in employer sponsored visas, partner visas, and general skilled migration. She's known to provide the best visa pathways that helps countless hopeful immigrants find the right pathway to settle in Australia. So let's take the session forward now. As I was saying, we have two of our um, migration agents, Mr. Navjot Singh and Ms. Neha Singh, uh, who are very who are pioneers and who specialize in a wide range of visas across general skill migration, partner visas, employer sponsored visas and much more. They are known to provide you the right pathways which can help all of the immigrants find the right pathway to settle in Australia long term. Uh, now our experts will be waiting to take your questions. Please post your questions in the chat box and we'll take them at the end of the session. Uh, we have some interesting giveaways for our attendees. Um, the details of which will come up on the screen now. So I'll just take you through this briefly. Um, these are some we want to take the session very deep and interactive and we encourage all questions and feedback. We have bumper cash prizes to claim for the ones who leave the most descriptive reviews under this Facebook post. Um, the link would come up in the description now in some time. Uh, if you tag your friends and uh, give interesting feedback throughout the session, the most participative audience member from the chat box is eligible for free giveaways like free PT coaching, IELTS coaching, PR consultations and a lot more. So we all encourage you to come forward and be part of our summit and uh, over to the presenter now. Thank you, Meghna. Thank you for the warm welcome, Meghna. Um, and uh, good afternoon and welcome to everyone. And thank you for joining the session. I am Neha Singh and I'm a, I'm a registered migration agent in Aussies, Verbi branch. So today we would be taking, me and Navjot would be taking the um, session for occupation welding fabrication, wall and floor tiling. So we would be discussing the PR pathways and the skill assessment for these occupations. So as discussed earlier uh, by Anusha for yeah. welding fabrication uh, and wall and floor tiling, she might have discussed the, all the courses, the eligibility, the fee structure and the duration for these courses. Furthermore to that, we would be discussing the skill, uh, skill assessment and the PR pathway for these occupations. Once you complete all those courses in Australia. So um, yeah. I would be discussing initially all the occupations which fall under the welder and fabrication occupations. But before I start with those occupations, uh, next. Next. I would like to discuss uh, why the trade courses are so in demand in Australia. So first of all, the the reason the trade courses are so in demand in Australia is that there is no such formal college degree required for these occupations. You can just start with the certificate three or a certificate four AQF levels, and then you can just start your career once uh, you get the formal training. There is no specified training uh, programs. Uh, um, there is uh, the training programs are very short duration course, so. Um, and uh, they give you chances to work with your own hands. So if you are a person who likes to work with their own hand, they are in, in uh, they have their own ideas to work. This these are uh, occupations which you can start with. So now they, uh, the other reasons are there are multiple job opportunities in metro as well as in regional areas for these occupations. 
The next reason for choosing the trade occupation is that there is stability in employment. You can take, you can work for someone or you can start up your own business. Last but not the least reason for choosing the trade courses is that they, they lead to the PR pathways in Australia. And also because of the increasing incoming of migration uh, migrants into the country, that uh, these trade courses are in demand because they are giving more job opportunities to the migrants. Next. Next. So I would be discussing the occupations welder and fabricator. So these are few of the occupation which fall into these uh, uh, occupation group list. First is welder first class. These are people who fabricate repair metal products using various welding techniques. Metal fabricator are people who mark off and fabricate structural steel and other metal stocks to make or repair metal products and structures such as boiler and pressure welder, pressure vessels. Sheet metal trade workers, they mark out shape, form and join sheet metals and other materials to make products and components. Next. Next. So now all of the uh, occupations, they fall into the MLTSSL list. They are skill level three occupations and they require minimum AQF level certificate three to start off with these occupations. Uh, most of the time, the trade persons who do these trade courses, they work into the uh, construction, um, construction, um, occupation, uh, construction side, mining and manufacturing. Now, and on an average, uh, these trade persons, uh, they earn roughly uh, $27 per, per hour rate. And on an average, they earn roughly $1,600 per week, which is quite good enough salary to start with. And according to the uh, National Skills Commission, it has been uh, got to know that the demand for these occupations for welder and fabricator is going to increase in future. At present, there are approximately 38,800 workers who are working into these trade occupations. And we are expecting that the demand for these occupation in the coming five years is going to increase. So according to the market and according to one of the uh, marketing um, industrial report, the uh, employment growth rate is going to increase in the coming next five years by 7.2%. Next. According to this uh, table, um, the demand for all these occupations in Australia, in all the states of Australia, is very strong at present, and it is predicted, according to the National Skill Commission, that in future the demand is going to be very strong. So, whosoever is looking for a change in their career, they can take up uh, these courses, and as they are very um, well paying, and their their demand in the future is also very. Uh, growing strong and you can take up these courses for a um, better future for yourself in Australia. Yeah. So next after this, um, Navjot would be discussing the other occupation, wall and floor tiling. He will be telling you about the occupations. So next to Navjot. Thank you, Neha. Thank you for passing on to me. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'll be talking about the occupation wall and floor tiling. Um, as you guys are aware, so wall and floor tiling, they lay slates, marble, glass tiles on external and internal walls and floors to provide protective and decorative finishes. So again, the occupation comes under a skill level three and it also comes under MLTSOL list, which means it gives you opportunity to apply for 189, 190, 491, and also gives you an employer sponsorship uh, permanent pathways. Next. Yeah, so average hourly rate for a wall floor tiler is about $25.50. Um, depending on the experience and depending on how, um, where you're working, whether you're working in construction sites or whether you're working into housing, um, the pay rate depends on that. 
at the moment um as neha mentioned earlier there has been a high demand in um trade occupations given that the construction um for even victoria itself has been increasing um there is a lot of demand in the occupations given that there are a lot of houses being built in um all around victoria so um this is a definitely a good option um for the students who are willing to um or who want to have a career change as well um next yep so this gives you an idea about how um you know how much demand there is so at the moment there are significant demand all over um australia different states um future demand is moderate um at the same time i would say um given that the migrants um numbers will be increasing in future time of course the more the houses the more the construction sites the more demand will be in this occupation next yep so um as you guys would be aware in every occupation um requires a skill assessment so what skill assessment does is that it determines you will have the relevant qualification skill and the experience um which you need for you to um be at a required skill level for a nominated occupation so of course all the skill assessments um i mean sorry for all the permanent visas um or even some temporary visas um when you are applying for um employer sponsored or even a 485 you do require some sort of a skill assessment to um go further so i will be going into detail about what sort of um skill assessment options are there and um if you guys have any any questions feel free to leave us a message we'll try to um get back to you after the whole session is completed um next yep so there are um two skill assessment bodies who look after about both of the trades i will be talking about both welder and fall floor uh, wall and floor tiling so first is a tra and the other one is wet assess so both them um look after some trade occupations so tra trade recognition australia offers job ready program it also offers migration skill assessment and it also offers offshore skill assessment program as well wet assess on the other hand only offers offshore skill assessment program i will be going into detail about job ready program um which you guys which is the most popular sort of skill assessment in the trade occupations and neha will be talking about other migration skill assessment and other osap pathways after um after we go through the job ready program uh next yep so basically what is job ready program um job ready program has four steps involved in the whole process um it's mainly for students who have just completed their studies they were on a student visa and now they want to apply for further 485 so for 485 um graduate stream students require a provisional skill assessment once you get your provisional skill assessment you move on to the next steps i will go into the each detail properly just want to give you heads up about the fees so the first step gives you um is around $200 for tra second step is about $450 step 3 is about $2540 and step 4 is $65 next so the first step is provisional skill assessment so the the purpose of this skill assessment is to verify the authenticity of your australian qualification and any previous employment you have whether it was um at the start of your studies or just towards when you finish your study or maybe you had a workplace assessment um through your education provider once you do this um you move on to the next step but before i do that i'll give you eligibility criteria for this as well next yeah so basically to be eligible to apply for provisional skill assessment you must have a primary visa holder for a international student visa to study in australia this is fairly the most important one i would say sometimes we get a query about secondary applicants on a student visa studying for a trade course and they want to do a job ready program um i want to just make a bit of emphasis on it that if you want to start a job ready program you must be or as a, you must be on a student visa 
as a primary holder, not be a secondary holder. Um, second thing is, of course, your study needs to be a Tricos registered um, um, study um, in Australia. You must have completed 360 hours of employment um, through a employer that you already have, or it could be a workplace assessment through your education provider as well. Um, the way to show these um, documents, you will require a reference letter from your employer. You will also require pay slips um, to submit with the application along with your education documents. Um, yep, so the employment, of course, needs to be highly relevant to your qualification, needs to be in Australia, and must have been completed in last three years um, before applying for your job ready provision and skill assessment. Next. So the next step after you get your provisional skill assessment, um, it takes about roughly two, three months. Um, you move on to the you move on to the job ready employment. Second step, this is where um, you start working um, full time with your employer. Along this time, um, yep, you must have a provisional skill assessment to apply for this. Second thing is you must have um, you must hold a visa which allows you to work full time. So a bridging visa um, going to a job ready program will somehow cover some of this um, employment as well, but mostly for job ready program. Um, second step, students are on their um, 485 and then that's how they get started with this. Um, it would roughly, the visa requires you to have at least minimum of four months visa remaining or I mean your full time visa remaining. Um, it applies to some people who have got their 485, let's say a 485 provisional skill um, post study work visa. Um, they no longer want to study what they studied on their student visa. They do another course and now they want to do a job ready program. This is the most important thing. So when you want to study a trade course, you want to make sure that when you're doing your job ready program, you have enough time to actually complete this step as well. Um, I see some people or I see some students who do want to study um, a trade course, but they're not aware of this requirement. So if you if you are willing or if you do want to consider a trade occupation, um, please make sure that you do have um, enough visa left when you're starting your job ready program. Next. So job ready work assessment. So this is a face to face assessment which is taken by a TI representative. Um, the purpose of this um, step is to assess whether you have the ability to work at the required skill level uh, for your occupation in an Australian work uh, workplace. So for this, of course, also you must have completed your employer ver ver employment verification reports and your SPRs, which is the skilled uh, progress reports as well from your employer. And you must have also completed 863 work hours, which you would have provided to TRA um, with your pay slips. Next. So again, to be eligible, um, I'll go over it again, 863 hours, which you would have completed in minimum six months. You provide a skills progress report, you provide a employer verification report, and once this is all completed and verified by TRA, they invite you to apply for the, um, they invite you to apply for this step. And then of course, um, they conduct the training um, face to face. Next. So now you have completed your step three as well. You have a remaining about 800, um, 800 hours. You complete, once you have completed all 1,725 hours, um, which roughly takes about four months for you guys to complete. Once this is all done, your step three has been completed as well. Um, you apply for the final assessment. So this is basically just a successful um, outcome which the TRA provides you just to um, show that, okay, you have the relevant skills and the qualification to work in the Australian uh, market. And this is the document which is required or which is used for your other future pathways 
um, when you're applying for permanent residency could be 189, 190, 491 visa, or it could be a employer sponsorship uh, visa. Um, next. Um, yep, so eligibility again, you have completed and then you have completed your 1735 hours over 12 months of your start date and end date. Next. So now I'll pass on to Neha and she will give you guys information about the um, the migration skill assessment and also the offshore skill assessment program. Yep. Over to you, Neha. Thank you, Nabjit. Next. So uh, coming to migration skill assessment, uh, as Nabjot had told you about job ready program, it's for the applicants who have studied here into their trade courses and they have got the you know experience training in those occupations in Australia. But what happens to the trade uh, trade workers who do not have a skill assessment, Australian skill assessment, or uh, who do not have any Australian work experience? So for those uh, trade workers who who have international qualification or they have Australian qualification, but they are not able to uh, you know, get their experience in Australia through job ready program. For those occupations, um, uh, TRA have other pathways to get their skills assessed uh, in those trade occupations. So one of the program that for T, uh, from TRA is migration skill assessment. Now TRA has specified some occupations and some uh, passport uh, country of passports. If your occupation is in that list and you belong to that country of passport, then you have to follow some other pathways. But if your occupation or your country of passport is not in that list, then you have to get your skill assessed through migration skill assessment. Now in migration skill assessment, if, we, if the trade person is having international qualification or they have an Australian qualification but not through RPL, in that case, those trade persons, they should have three years of full-time or equivalent part-time employment that should be take, undertaken after the qualification has been issued to them. And if they have acquired Australian uh, qualification issued to them through RPL. In that case, they need three years of full time or part time or equivalent part time employment that should be take, undertaken after the RPL certificate was issued to them. Or in some cases, six times full time experience or equivalent part time employment, which can be a combination of employment undertaken before and after the RPL certificate issued to them can be considered. For example, uh, four years of experience uh, can be considered before RPL and two years can be considered after RPL. Now, uh, in this, the process uh, for to apply for the migration skill assessment involves that you have to, um, first of all, register yourself with DRA through their online portal. You have to provide them the, all the evidences. The evidences include your qualification evidence and your experience evidences. Once those evidences has been provided to TRA, they will uh, they will review those documents. You will go review all those documents and then submit your application. So now the documents, uh, um, the evidence for the qualification uh, involves your all your mark sheets, your completion letter, your transcripts, um, and uh, the the assessors and uh, the TRA assessors, they will assess your qualification and they will see how, um, how uh, they, they will see the quality, the level and the relevance, whatever you have studied overseas or in uh, in Australia, whether that, that matches to that of the trade courses, whatever you are applying for. And in the employment, Part for the evidence of employment, they will uh, they will assess whatever your qualification, uh, whatever your experience is, whether it is relevant to that of the occupation. For that, you need to provide certain documents, which we will discuss later on. Um, once that has been done and the application has been submitted, the TRA will go through the documents provided by you, and if all of them are satisfied, the TRA, TRA is satisfied that 
you have the skills and the qualification according to whatever is required for that occupation they will give you a positive outcome and then you can apply for the um, you can use that skill assessment for the um, visa purposes gsm purposes for australia so now in this process um, the fee structure which is uh, for the skill assessment is that um, the fees for migration skill assessment is 720 dollars and the processing time is uh, approximately 12 months from the date of online submission of your application. So um, this is the process. If you are not uh, into that list and your occupation is not in the list, but say if your occupation is in the list and you belong to a country or passport, then there are different pathways, which I will discuss next. So the, uh, the the next pathway for assessing the occupation trade occupation is OSAP and TSS. Now, some uh, in this occupation in this pathway there are two path uh, this uh, process um, program there are two pathways pathway one and pathway two. In pathway one is for the applicants who have who have experience in their um, these trade occupation but they are they do not have any formal australian vet qualifications and the pathway two is for applicants who have australian qualification or australian license with without any uh, restriction so first we will discuss about pathway one which is for applicants who do not have any australian vet qualification in this also there are some trades which require license like electrician general electrician first class air condition and plumber these are some of the occupations which require licensing but um, in that case if you um, have any formal qualification in that case you just require four years of experience to apply through pathway one for OSAP or TSS and if you do not have any any formal training then in that case you require six or six years of experience but now as we are discussing only venting fabrication and wall and floor tiling occupations these occupations are not licensed occupations so in that in this case if you are not having any formal training then you require five years of experience but if you do not, if you have a, any, have any formal training, then three years of experience is required. But we have to keep in mind that out of these total experience, 12, 12 years of full time experience should be in the last three years before you apply for TRA. Now and uh, now coming to pathway two, uh, when you have Australian qualification or Australian license without any restriction, three years of experience which should be a paid experience is required to apply for, uh, to, uh, for OSAP or TSS through pathway two. You um, need to have 12 months of experience in the last three months before applying for the OSAP through pathway one. Now the process um, um, and the, the fee structure for this uh, OSAP is the process is like first of all you have to register yourself with an RTO for that you have to select a specified RTO which has been certified by TRA you have to contact them they will tell you about what what are your eligibilities and what documents you require to apply for these assessments so once that is done you have to register yourself on online with TRA portal and the RTO will give you an um, assessment code, unique code. With that code, you have to do the payment for the first stage, which is called document evidence stage. In that stage, you have to provide all the documents for your qualification, whatever you have, or the formal training, plus all the documents for your experience, either it's offshore or onshore. Once that documents have been provided, TRA will go through all those documents and if it comes out to be positive, they will <clears throat> give you outcome that now you have to apply for the uh, technical assessment. So uh, next. So this is the process to apply for OSAP or TSS. You have to choose a TRA approved RTO. You have to sub, uh, register, submit 
you have to pay them twelve eighty dollars for the documentary evidence stage. Once the documents have been provided to TRA, they will assess those documents, I and mean, if they meet the um, meet meet the eligibility to apply for those occupations, they will invite you to apply for the next stage, which is the technical interview. Now, in the technical interview, the TRA. Uh, will assess you for your skills and qualifications and experience, whatever you have. And the assessor would be would be a person who is an experienced person in the trade course, whatever you are applying for. They will assess you, and if you pass that stage for technical interview, they will uh, give you an skill outcome, and you can use that skill outcome letter to apply for the visa purpose for Australia. So now coming to the um, the fee structure, the documentary evidence stage, uh, as I told you, that the the TRA charges uh, one thousand two hundred and eighty dollars, and for the technical interview, the fees for OSAP and TSS is two thousand dollars. But say uh, if your occupation is a is a licensed occupation, say if you are applying for OSAP as an electric electrician general, in that case you have to go for a technical interview plus a practical assessment. So you have to pay for the practical assessment, but welders, fabricators and wall floor tilers, they are not they are not the um, licensed occupation. So the assessor might ask you for a practical in some cases, but if not, then you have once the technical interview has been done and you have cleared that you will get the outcome for your skill assessment and then you can go further for your PR pathways. So next. Next. So uh, on and now I would discuss about the documents, whatever is required to apply for OSAP or TSS. You have to provide the bio page of your passport. You have to provide all the qualification documents evidence of skill, experience and employment and employment statements. You have to provide copy of each document in original along with the English translation. All the documents should be English. If not, you have to provide the translation for them along with the original documents. You have to provide the, with the payment evidence to TRA. Uh, the, sometimes what happens is um, um, with the employment thing, um, say if uh, you uh, were working for someone, then in that case, the documents which would be the pay slips, your bank statements, superannuation, your notice of assessment, and you can give a statement of uh, roles and responsibility letter, a reference letter, and your contract employment contract from your employer. But say if you are self-employed, and in that case, you uh, you have to provide some other documents. Say if you are in Australia, in that case, you can provide your ABN, your business registration, your BAS statements, your notice of assessment. You can provide the invoices to clients, which you give you to your clients, invoices you get from your suppliers. OK, and you can give your financial statements, which can showing your uh, all the income and the expenses, your tax returns. You can show all those documents. But say if you are um, you were self-employed uh, overseas. In that case, you have to provide your business registration, your invoices to your clients, invoices from your suppliers. You can show your bank statements, including your expenses and your um, your income. So uh, these are the documents basically required for the document evidence re evidence stages. Next. So once the document evidence, uh, evidence stage has been done, the technical interview, which would be done by one of the assessors from TRA, who would be an expert person in the same trade for which you are applying. Uh, the assessor will call, um, you know, assess your skills and knowledge, which may also involve the practical assessment. If you are uh, applying for a licensed occupation through pathway one. And uh, the assessor will involve in uh, determination of your capacity to undertake the task as a trade person in Australia through pathway two. Next.
So now uh, this was all about the uh, skill assessment for the trade courses. Now we will be discussing the PR pathway for these uh, trade courses, welder, fabrication, wall and floor tiling. So the general uh, the pathways would be the general skilled migration visas and the employer sponsored visas. Next. So the general skilled migration visas involve the visas which uh, subclass 189, 190 and 491 visas. 190, uh, 189 is an independent skilled visa. In this visa, you have to chase all the points, which is minimum is 65 points for yourself. You need a competent, that is six each in English or PT. You need a positive skill assessment in your occupation to get uh, to be eligible for those one for 189 visa. For 190 visa, which is a, a skilled nominated visa, you need 65 points, a competent English, positive skill assessment. The state would be allocating you five points for the nomination. 491 visa, which is skilled um, uh, work, yeah. regional, provisional or family sponsored visa. In this also, you need minimum 65 points to be eligible, competent English and a positive skill assessment. These are the requirements of the Department of okay. Affairs to apply for these visas. Plus, you will be getting 15 points from the state or your relative to uh, to be eligible for. Next. Now, I would be discussing the PR options for welder, fabricator and wall floor tilers in New South Wales. So these all occupations are open and they are available for New South Wales. In New South Wales, these occupations are open for onshore as well as for offshore applicants. Um, if you are an offshore, if you are an onshore applicant, for that you need to be residing in New South Wales, anywhere in New South Wales, from the last three months, or you should be working in New South Wales in your nominated occupation minimum for 20 hours per week from the last. Uh, there is no time frame how they what they have mentioned. But for welder, fabricator and wall floor tider, the New South Wales state requires three years of experience for onshore as well as for off offshore applicants. So if you have three years of experience, then New South Wales can be an option for you to apply for these occupations. Now coming to 491 New South Wales, they, the 491 New South Wales has been categorized into three streams, stream one, two and three. So for stream one, is for people who are living and working in their nominated occupations from the last 12 months for a minimum of 20 hours per week. So if you had been living in New South Wales and you had been working in your nominated occupation from the last 12 months while living in regional New South Wales, then stream you can apply for 491 stream one for New South Wales. Stream three is for people who have completed their two years of study from regional New South Wales. And stream three is is there. There is no such condition for the applicants to meet. But yes, because the number of application is increasing for stream three, four, nine, one, New South Wales. They have prioritized people who would be living and working in regional New South Wales, and they would be having higher points. So if you are looking for PR pathway through four, nine, one, New South Wales. Uh, it would be preferable if you can move to those regional areas where your occupations are available and start living there and apply for the 491 if you are a high point applicant and if even if you do not have any experience in that occupation. Next. So now next is the Victoria State. Back. The so next is the Victoria State. Uh, for 190 Victoria, um, you should be living and working in your occupation. But unfortunately, Victoria do not hold any options for welder, fabricator and wall floor tiler occupations for this financial year. They are just um, um, you know, inviting people who are working into few target sectors and they are utilizing their STEM skills. So at, for this financial year, Victoria won't be a very good option for you. Next. Uh, 
Now coming to a city, Canberra. Canberra, um, unfortunately, also um, these uh, welder, metal fabricator, and wall floor tilers are currently not available in the ACT critical list. But otherwise, for the other occupations, if you are living and working for minimum of six months full time in any occupation and should be meeting the Canberra metric, you have to make minimum of 65 points according to the metrics. Then you are eligible for 190. And if you have been living and working in a city for a minimum of three months in any occupation for 20 hours per week also, and you meet the metrics point for a city, then you are eligible for 491 Canberra. Next. West Australia. So now West Australia. Um, they have two streams, the general stream and the graduate stream. So good graduate stream was for people who have graduated from um, they have completed their two years of studies from South Australia, uh, sorry, West Australia, and they have uh, six months of work in their nominated occupation or have a job offer for the next one year in West Australia. They are eligible to apply for uh, the PR pathway for graduate uh, for uh, 190 or 491 West Australia. And if you uh, if you are not a graduate for, from West Australia, then you fall into the general stream for West Australia. For that, you require a job offer of 12 months full time from an employer in your nominated occupation in West Australia. But unfortunately, West Australia has to yesterday also declared that they have uh, finished out with all the their C quota, which was available for the state for 190-491. So they won't be inviting applicants for 190-491 for the next um, part of the session uh, for the financial year. They have asked the department for another, another 5,000 allocation seats for 190-491 for West Australia. But it is under consideration. So at present, West Australia won't be inviting any applicants for these occupations. Next. Now coming to South Australia, South Australia is the hottest uh, state for the trade occupations. So now if you, if you are a trade of um, trade person, and you want to apply for your PR pathways in Australia, then South Australia can be a very good option for you. So for welders and fabricators, the requirement if you are if you are living in South Australia and you're working in your nominated occupation is that you need to work only for three months in South Australia in your field, and then you are eligible for the state nomination for South Australia. And for wall and floor tiler, for to be eligible for 190, you should be currently working in your nominated either for 12 months in Greater Adelaide or for six mm -hmm. months in outer regional South Australia. And if you look for 491 as a wall and floor tiler, then you should be working in your occupation from the last six months anywhere in South Australia. So if you are an applicant who is looking for the PR pathway, South Australia can be a good option either if, if you're doing your job ready program so we suggest that you move once you complete your qualification, you just move to that state, do your job ready program there. Or if you are not doing your job ready program, you have experience, just move there, start meet those requirements for these occupation for work and be eligible for the state. So next, uh, I would hand over to Navjot for the rest of the states to explain for these occupations. Yes, thank you, Neha. Um, yeah, very informative. So I'll be talking about Northern Territory. Um, as you can see over the slide, welding, um, welder occupation is open um, in Northern Territory. Fortunately, wall and floor, floor tiling is not. Next. So the basically two streams in Northern Territory. Uh, first one is for graduates. Second one is for normal other residents. So when you talk about eligible Northern Territory graduates, you must have completed your um, qualification. You must have been living in Northern Territory for six months and demonstrate genuine efforts to obtain employment. 
So that's the criteria for 190. But of course, given that the skill assessment criteria requires you to complete one year of job ready program, um, if you're not able to find an employment in Northern Territory, even though that you have studied from there, it will still not benefit you. So of course, the employment is mandatory in all the um, in all trade occupations in every given state. Other for other people, um, there's other residents. So this is basically for the um, applicants who have not studied from Northern Territory. Um, for 190, you need to demonstrate that you have been living for in Northern Territory for two years, and you need to show that you have been employed um, for two years, and you have further two months of contract available to you from that employer. Um, other Residents for 491 option would be residing in Northern Territory for last four months. Um, you have to demonstrate that you have been working in your in, uh, nominated occupation for over six months and provide further four months evidence of employment in your occupation. Uh, next. So Tasmania, um, we've got welder occupation open there. Unfortunately, we do not have wall and floor tiling open. However, there is um, roof tiling, um, roof tiler occupation open for 190. Uh, next. So for 190, there are a couple of different streams. I will only be talking about the first two streams, which will be the graduate stream and the work stream. If you require more information in detail, I suggest you guys to book a consultation with us. We will go into further detail. So with the category one um, graduate stream, you must have studied in Tasmania for 92 weeks, which the course needs to be high course registered full time in Tasmania. And over those two years, you must be living in Tasmania as well. Um, nomination category two um, is that you have been working for at least six months prior to applying for your application. You have been working full time, which is 35 hours per week, and um, your occupation must be on the TSO list. So both of the occupations which I mentioned earlier, um, the roof tiler and the welder are on the TSO list. Next. So 491 um, is very similar to 190 as well. There is nomination categories. Uh, I mean, different nomination categories. I will only talk about the first two. Um, so the first one is you live there for one year and you study a CRICOS registered course for over um, for the duration of one year. Um, after that, you will be eligible to apply for your 491, given that you do meet your skill assessment criteria as well. Um, nomination category two is basically you have been employed for six months um, and are employed for 35 hours per week. Um, you don't have to be working in your own occupation. It can be related to your occupation. Um, yep, so you would be eligible from there. Next. Queensland, so again, very similar to other states as well. They offer two nomination programs or um, one would be the graduate stream. So the graduate stream is actually not available for um, any lower available. I mean, any courses lower than the diploma level. So you must have completed bachelor's or higher education than bachelor's to be eligible from a graduate stream from Queensland. Um, only stream that you may be eligible for from Queensland would be a skilled worker living in Queensland. The eligibility criteria for 190 is you need to have at least 80 points, and for 491, you must have at least 65 or higher. Of course, the occupation needs to be on the list, and you must have seven each in IELTS or PTE. Um, for 190, you must show at least six months of skilled employment in for over 35 hours per week in your occupation. For 491, um, you require about three months full-time employment. And of course, you also require 
further two months of contract for um, both of 190 and 491. Next. Yep, so this was about the states. Um, Neha can give you a bit of information. I think we are running a bit of time as well. So over to you, Neha. Thank you, Namjot. So yes, it was all about the states uh, through GSM visas for all these occupations. Now I would be discussing the employer sponsored PR pathways for these occupations. So now under employer sponsored visas, the the, uh, the visa category subclasses which fall as 186, 482 and 494 visas. Now 186 visa is a permanent visa. It's an employer nomination scheme. It's a permanent visa. It leads to PR. To be eligible for this visa, you need at least three years of full time or equivalent part time experience in your nominated occupation. You need a, a positive skill assessment in your occupation and you need a sponsor who could sponsor you for this uh, 186 visa. So uh, for 186 visa, um, it's definitely that you need to have three years of experience and employer is also required. Apart from that, positive skill assessment is definitely required for all the occupations. You need to have um, six each, that is competent English, to be eligible for 186. This definitely is a visa uh, which leads you to PR. It, um, it is further categorized into direct entry and TRT streams. Direct entry is for people who have three years of experience, but they have not worked with one employer. They found an employer who is ready to sponsor them for 186, then they can do 186 direct entry. But say if the employer sponsored the applicant, um, the employee for 482 and they worked for the whole time period with that employer, then they can uh, and the employer is ready to sponsor them for, for the further PR pathway they go into 186 TRT stream. So uh, next is the 482 visa, which is generally called as TSS visa. It has been replaced by 457 visa, which was earlier known as 457 visa. TSS is temporary skill shortage visa. It's it's not a permanent visa. It, it's just a temporary visa, which will be granted to you for two to four years. For this visa, to be eligible for this visa, you need two years of full-time experience in your nominated occupation or equivalent part-time experience would also be counted. Skill assessment is not required for all the occupation. There is some occupation which definitely requires skill assessment for 482 visa, but not all the occupations. You need an employer. This To apply for this visa, there are three stages. The first stage is SPS. The second stage is nomination and the third stage is visa application. In the SPS, the employer has to prove that they, if they are an approved um, uh, improved, uh, approved uh, sponsor and they, they had been um, um, you know, running their business in Australia and they do not have any adverse information about them. In the nomination, they nominate the employee, employee for that particular occupation that they have to show that they try to find out an employer um, employee who is a permanent or a permanent PR or an Australian citizen but they could not find that person with the, that skill set that's why they are nominating that um, applicant for 482 visa they have to tell that uh, they have to show that the position is a genuine position it has not been created just for the uh, just to um, accommodate that applicant for 482 visa they have to provide um, salary according to the market salary rate to that employee and they have to provide the position description for what roles and responsibilities that employee would be doing into that organization and then if the uh, SBS and nominations are approved then the visa applicant has to apply for the 482 visa uh, this uh, 482 visa can be done, uh, can be granted between two to four years, depending upon how much uh, the employer has nominated the employee for this visa. For uh, it's not a definitely not a PR, but it can lead to um, 
PR pathway if your occupation is in the ML test list. So as we are discussing the welding, fabrication and floor and wall tiling occupations, all these occupations are in the MLTSSL list. Say, so if you have applied for 482 visa, it will definitely lead you to 186 visa as well, either uh, direct entry or TRT stream, depending upon what are your arrangements with your employer. So next, uh, the last employer sponsor visa is 491, 494 visa, which is skilled employer sponsored provisional visa. This is also not a um, permanent visa. It will be granted to you for five years. In to be eligible for this visa, you need three years of full time experience. Um, your nominated occupation, uh, you should have skill assessment in your nominated occupation, and your nom uh, your employer should be in the designated regional area of Australia. And if say if you have completed, uh, you have lived during those, um, you have met met the um, requirement for those five years, then you can apply for PR pathway through 191 visa, which will be a PR. So this is all about the PR pathway uh, for these occupations. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment, and we will try to answer you as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. A big thank you to everyone who attended our session. Um, I would particularly like to thank the experts who've been so generous and shared so much information in precision and so much detail. Um, I'll just allow a few minutes for anyone who wants to post questions if they have any in the chat box. I want to remind you about the bumper cash rewards that you can get by leaving the most descriptive review under our Facebook post and um, the link for which is already there in the chat box. Um, also, don't forget to leave reviews on how insightful the experience was for you. We value your feedback and we're going to incorporate whatever you suggest to us in the in the future. Um, don't miss out on any of our upcoming information sessions because we have uh, information sessions on a wide variety of topics which are going to be really useful for you if you're planning your stay here in Australia long term and the links for those sessions are also there in the chat box. Um, I don't think we have many questions that we haven't yet addressed so we're good to go. Thank you everyone. Thanks once again. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.